ready to get back in our Father's Word. Second book of Peter. We're going to pick it up with chapter 2 today. Remember, the first chapter was your character, how to build your character. The second chapter is about false preachers, false prophets, and just bad people in general. The third chapter, which will be basically in the next lecture, is the return of Christ and the three world ages. What a teacher this old fisherman Peter was. And he lays it out just plain and simple where anyone can understand if you just listen to his word rather than the traditions of men. So having said that, a word of wisdom from our Father, chapter 2, verse 1, second book of Peter, and it reads with that word of wisdom from Yeshua. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. In other words, we don't want the Word of God in our vocabulary. Take it out of this. Take it out of that. Just do away with it. We don't want to hear the name. You know, does that sound familiar? It should. We've got them today. Okay. Now, there, the, but when someone of that nature uh, comes forth, they're not going to do a whole lot of harm because you know they're ignorant to start with. Okay. But it's the one that claims to be a preacher and does say the name, but teaches falsely. That's a dangerous person. It's dangerous to those that don't know any better, that do not know what they're hearing, that do not know if it's traditions of men or the Word of God. I want you to know that the word damnable and the word destruction here are the same word in the Greek. It's apalia, which is the base root of Satan's name. Okay. So therefore, you know where to look to find the trouble. It's always with that prince of darkness and the conspiracy that is between Almighty God and Satan. That controversy that continues on and on and on. Let, let there be no doubt. God is telling you there are false teachers and you, you better be prepared for it. And, and how do you tell a false preacher by rightly dividing the Word of God. If you hear some preacher saying, you know, according to this great preacher, it's so-and-so, and according to this other great preacher, it's this way, that should make you almost turn him off right there. Because a real teacher will say, this is what God says. Not what some man says. This man or any other man. It is the scripture, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, that you want to listen to. You know, the trouble with our law today is it is law of precedent rather than the law of God. Okay. The law of precedent is according to what this court decided in that court. You might have had a bunch of fruitcakes on that court that made that decision and set that precedent. Okay. But the law is the law, period. Okay. It is yea or nay. None of this on this behalf and that behalf. It's according to what God says. That's the way you tell the difference. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And they will. If you teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse, and you stick strictly with the Word of God, there will be many that will speak against you. They'll make stuff up. They'll call you this. They'll call you that. They will try to brand you this, that, or the other. That is typical Satan's way. But... Don't ever let it bother you, okay? You, don't, you, you do not, when, when you set out to follow Christ, you do not want to have this old, I want to be the most popular person on the block. I don't care what people think about me on the block if being truthful to God's Word offends them. I don't want them around me. I don't want to be popular with them. I only want to be popular with those that enjoy the Word of God and with God Himself. Okay. 
So let that, um, let that be a lesson to you. How, how do you rightly divide the word, the four W's? Who is it written to? What is the time sequence? And, and um, why is it written? Okay. And what is its object? If you'll stick with that, you'll always come out pretty well wanting to understand God's Word, not traditions of men. The reason I spend time on that, you've got false teachers, whether it's in ignorance or deliberate, doesn't matter. How you tell the difference is, do they teach God's Word or man's Word? That's pretty simple. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, that, that means farm fabrications. They make up a bunch of stuff, traditions. They make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And damnation, again, is Apollia, the prime root of Satan's name. You want him in, you want him in your... Uh, you know, I'm glad that in the last book, First Peter said the judgment begins at the pulpit. Okay, begins at the house of God. Why? Right? Because God won't put up with fakes. Okay, God won't bless fakes, but He does bless those that truly teach the Word of God, that feed the sheep, that feed the lambs. So. Um, you want to, you, how, well, how do I know it's fabricated? What if it doesn't match God's Word? It's pretty simple. If God didn't say it, why would you want to make a religion out of it? Verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Now, what is he talking about here? Fallen angels. I mean, that went against the very word of God. And, and um, how precious it is that our Father, this is one of the only places that hell is a different place than Hades or Suel or Gehenna. Okay. It's Tartarus. It's the holding place of the fallen angels. It's different. It is God's holding place. And uh, where, where is this written of? In the book of Jude. You'll find it in that book of Jude concerning these fallen angels. Okay. And hey, they're coming back again. As Jesus said in Matthew 24 concerning the last days, uh, that as in the days of Noah, then they'll be giving and taking in marriage again with who? The fallen angels. Why? Because Satan and those angels are going to be kicked out on this earth. A lot of people just say, I just can't hardly accept that. Well, you haven't studied God's Word then. You're ignorant of God's Word because He declares it. Okay, uh, Jude, the great book of Jude, verse 4. Listen to it carefully. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't want anything to do with Him. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. In other words, we talked about it. How that the Lord, having saved people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Uh, Father won't put up with nonsense. When he literally shows someone the way and they choose a different path, by you're through. Okay. Verse 6. Here's why we came here. Listen carefully. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness unto the judgment of, that, of the great day. What day? The Lord's day, of course. What, what did he mean they left their habitation? They left heaven and came to seduce women, as it's written in Genesis chapter 6. Yeah, you mean to tell me that uh, the fallen angels, the, ne the Nephilim, seduced women? Well, children were born. Do you understand what causes a child to be born? They were called Geber. They were hybrids. They were misfits. They were against God's Word. 
and and in, this is what brought about the flood itself to destroy all the hybrids because Christ wanted a clean genealogy through the daughters of Eth ha Adam, Adam and Eve whereby Christ could come through that lineage and be the savior of the world. Satan was trying to block it because he wanted to be savior of the world. He wanted that role. And all he brings is death. Okay. So they left their place of habitation and came to the earth to seduce women. Don't worry, it'll happen again. As, as I told you before in Matthew 24, and Paul himself warns of it concerning a woman should, it's translated hair, but it means Christ over her head to be covered with him because of the angels. 1 Corinthians 11.10. Verse 7 again of Jude. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of what was happening there. I don't need to draw you a picture of what's going after same the same type flesh is, okay? God abhors it. Verse 8, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. They make light of that that is true and that that is right. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a rallying accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Don't ever argue with Satan. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ. Put him behind you. Put him back where you came from. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beast, in those things they corrupt themselves. They die okay, with disease and filth. Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and and um, perished in the gainsaying of Cory. Uh, you know, um, and, and so it is. Poor old Balaam. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. In other words, they claim to be religious. They claim they want to love the Lord. That's not what they're after. They're fakes. Filth. And it brings on the very wrath of God. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You know who warned about this even back at the time? Listen carefully, 14. And Enoch, that was the one that was transformed. He was good and God just took him, okay? Way back in the book of Genesis in the beginning. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, he preached of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. And, and so it is. Fifteen, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Flattering. Oh, you're so great. You're such a wonderful person. Satan's number one M.O. Okay. But, beloved, remember ye the words which are spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. There's no room in them. 
But these are the angels that left their place of habitation, which is with the Father, at Satan's command, messing up the perfect plan of God, bringing about the flood of Noah, Enoch himself preaching against this, standing alone, and God saw fit to simply deliver him. He was too good for this wicked world. Well, why did God kill, why did he destroy Sodom? Because of sodomy. That's really, you have to be a bright person to understand that, don't you? Well, how do we know that for sure? Go, go sift through the ashes, my friend. Okay, returning then to chapter 2, the great book of, of Second Peter. Let's go with it. Next verse, please. Verse 5. And, and, and this is what our Father did. And He spared not the old world, the first earth age. He didn't. We'll learn about it in the next lecture. But save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. He destroyed them. And verse 6, And he turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, uh, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. I don't know. You want to go sift through the ashes? You should, because it's going to happen again. God will not tolerate it. Verse 7, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. In other words, when two angels, some angels appear and they say, should we let Abraham know where we're going? We're going down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I've got a nephew there. Don't, don't destroy him. And of course, um, God said, if you can find one just person there, I'll save them. And sure enough, it was Lot and his daughters. Verse 8, For that righteous man dwelleth, dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He could not stand the corruption in Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 9, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knows how to do it. He knows how to take care of you. As we learned in the last book, <clears throat> First Peter, that God's eyes are upon those that do what's right, that is to say, righteous. And His ears are open to the prayer of those that do what's right. But boy, does He have His eyes also on those that do what's wrong. Verse 10, But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness, and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They don't mind cursing our Father. Verse 11, Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not rallying accusations against them before the Lord. Don't ever argue with Satan. Okay. It's a waste of time. And don't let him pull you into that. Or don't ever let any of his little ones pull you into it. You don't have time for them. Don't mess with it. Verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. 7,000 of them die. They're already sentenced to death, not by name. But all the fallen angels, that's why they're in Tartarus. They're dead men walking. And they shall die. It is written in the 11th chapter. Well, when do they die? When, when the two witnesses rise from the street? 7,000 ungodly, unclean, fallen angels die. 13 and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. <clears throat> They'll even take Holy Communion with you. They claim to be Christians at your festivals. They'll be there, okay, claiming to take part. 
But they only have one thing in mind. And it's not pretty. It's not good. And God will condemn them. 14, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. They whisper in the ears of the unstable. And heart, they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. And so it is. You know, um, Satan's main trick is beguiling. Okay, he beguiled Eve, as it's written in Second Corinthians chapter eleven. See that he doesn't do it to you. Okay, they're coming, and they're coming to deceive. Verse fifteen, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer who loved the wages of unrighteousness. In other words, old Balaam, he was a, pre he was a priest. And, and he really was a, not a, all that bad a priest, but the enemy offered him money to come and, and prophesy to him. And God said, if they send for you, you can go. <laughs> they didn't send for him. Balaam saddled his ass, I mean hardly before daybreak the next morning, and headed out without the enemy even calling him. Verse 16, But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. In other words, God had to go to Balaam's donkey. In other words, the donkey could see the angel of God standing in the path forbidding them. Balaam couldn't because he had his eyes on man's traditions. And God had to speak through a dumb ass to get Balaam to wake up. I hope he doesn't have to do that to you when he gave you a letter with all the truth in it as a warning of who you should listen to and how your ears should perk up when you hear those old familiar beguilings. I don't know, do they? 17. These are wells without water. You're not going to get any good out of it. They're never going to produce any fruit. Clouds, they are carried with a tempest, but never a drop of rain. To whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. In other words, God has cursed it. And so it will be. So it will always be. Verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity... They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. You don't want to do that, okay? Why? When you come into God's Word, it's pretty easy to rightly divide it. You don't, you don't listen to these fruitcakes, okay? There's a lot of them. I said there's a lot of fruitcakes. Well, are you calling names? No, that's what they are. Okay. That's what God calls them. Okay. They're worthless. They're never going to produce anything. They're never going to amount to anything. And they never actually get into the Word of God to help a soul that's, a soul that's going to be dying if you don't bring salvation from our Heavenly Father to lead, to guide, to direct, to put common sense and leadership into the minds of the people because this controversy of false teaching, and that's why Peter brings this chapter to bear on falseness and, and slogans that are made up by man that are not even in God's Word, and many of them claiming God sent them and God doesn't even know them and warns against them. So you want to be careful who you listen to. And you know, I, 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 want to, I want to state something real quick. I don't want you to be afraid to hear anything, but I want you to be wise enough that you can call out the junk, just bam, just like that. When you hear junk, guess what? It's junk. It's not truth. If it's not God's Word, it's junk. 
is somebody taking from a pulpit the traditions of men and trying to deceive people. Okay. It will not ward off the deception of the end times. Like the next chapter is going to be the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are you going to be? Who are you going to be listening to? Are you going to make it? Or will you have been deceived and led astray? What he's saying here, for those that have been enlightened, that know the truth, that have come to, sal to, to uh, accept and honor salvation, and then allow themselves to listen to a bunch of junk in the name of Jesus, only it's not the true Jesus, because he doesn't deal in junk. It is real sad when man gets so far off base as Balaam did that God has to use an animal to speak to them to get their attention. But he will do it. He will get your attention one way or the other. Even if it's just on that day when Tartarus is opened and you have to join it. That's not a good trip, my friend. You know, that word is only utilized one time in the whole Word of God, in any language. It's a place you sure don't want to go. It's a place you sure don't want to have anything to do with it. Because it's just the place for the fallen angels, the deceivers that left their first habitation. To have one purpose, to destroy the Word of God. How precious it is and to follow the true Word of God. His word. Verse 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. In other words, if you let Satan overcome you with his lies, his platitudes, his uh, fabricated um, uh, uh, statements, that go away from the Word of God, then guess what? You, they, and He'll promise you the whole world. He'll promise you what a great guy you are. You, know, you, you really look like you've got it going for you. That's Satan's main MO, is to puff you up. And God has a way of putting that pen in you that lets the air out, too. Brings you back, back to earth. And, and to the promise. Promise and liberty and freedom, and all they do is put you in chains, chains of bondage to, to sin and the falling away from the gift of God. It's so simple to be pleasing to Almighty God. All He wants is your love. But if you love Him, you can't be hankying around with a bunch of liars, okay? He won't have it. He won't put up with it. Why? Because if you're hanking around with a bunch of traditions, that's not righteous. And if you're not righteous, God doesn't have his eyes on you, and God doesn't have his wing over you, and he does not hear your prayers. So you always want to do what's right. Verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end, and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. It truly is. If you had the knowledge to come to God and want, want to love Him, to study His Word and to follow Him, and then if you listen to a bunch of fabricators, then your end is going to be a lot worse than it was in the beginning. You know why? Listen carefully. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. That is to say, to turn away from the Word of God. What is the Word of God? It's Christ. Christ is the living Word. You turn away from Him, and where are you at? You're in Satan's camp. And, and the saying is not all that pretty, my friend, but it gets it done. You want to know what God's actual feelings are about it? Verse 22, listen carefully. 
but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. In other words, how disgusting. That's how God looks at it. I, I, that's pretty, pretty disgusting. But when someone has the truth of God's word and then will listen to a bunch of fruitcakes, that's what God thinks about you. Okay. It's disgusting. So I don't know how much, uh, I don't know what a better way would be for God to prove to you or to document that there's falseness in the world if you listen to it. Why? Because of Satan. Okay. Hey, he's real. False teachings are real. Because man, you know, you have certain people that want to make a name for themselves. They'll even name their ministries after themselves. Okay. Rather than the Lord Jesus Christ, our head shepherd. Because uh, the man's on a toot. All right. He, he, he wants to be... He wants to be Savior. That's the same thing Satan wanted. It doesn't, doesn't really help that much. And I'm not judging people, and I'm not criticizing. Truth is truth. But I do not want people to be deceived by gainsayers. That's what this chapter is about. That's what this lecture has been about. See that you are not beguiled by false teachings. There's a lot of it out there. Some of it in, is just, they just don't know any better. And some of it have been taught in seminaries to not go past a fourth grade education in their teaching, to not take you into the languages, to not go into anything that could be considered controversial. Hey, listen, the controversy is between Satan and God. It's got to be controversial. Okay. The truth is, it always is. You can't shun that. You got to make a stand, because if you don't stand for something, you don't stand for nothing. You don't want to go there. Stay true to your father. Stay in his word. Don't miss the next lecture. It goes very deep into the three world ages and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are you going to be? Let's find out. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please?